Hello and welcome to Cyber Physical Systems. My name is Walid Taha and I am a professor of computer science. Uh, some of the most exciting innovations today are cyber physical systems. Examples are autonomous cars, segways, quadcopters, and SpaceX's Dragon spacecraft. Cyber physical systems, or CPS for short, are not science fiction. In France and Denmark, there are already trains without drivers. Around the world, you see smart buildings with zero carbon footprint. Sometimes they even have their own windmill to provide a clean energy supply. How do you build such systems? This is what this course is about. It's a gentle introduction to topics that you need to master to be one of tomorrow's innovators. To make everything easier and more fun for you, the course itself has several innovations. For example, all course materials are freely available online. Last year, editions of the lecture notes are available from bit.ly slash capital LNCPS 2014. The lecture notes homepage has links to the official course description and logistics. To motivate your learning throughout the course, we consider the open problem of designing a robot that can play ping pong. This is a great example because it illustrates the wide range of expertise that you need to solve it. The lecture notes consist of seven chapters. Chapter 1 introduces CPS and explains why it has become such a hot topic. It also introduces Acumen, the open source modeling environment that we use in the course. Chapter 2 talks about modeling physical systems using continuous math. Students like this chapter and see it as a chance to use math that they already know to reason about the physical world. Chapter 4, Control Theory, is how we get a continuous system to behave the way we want. Chapter 5 is about computing in the physical world. Chapter 6 deals with some details of how we get a robot arm to move. Chapter 7 gives you a taste of topics that you can study in more advanced courses. To find out more about what you will learn in this course, visit the page and follow the links. You'll see, for example, that in the introduction we talk about the innovation process, starting from an idea and going all the way to a product. Similarly, when we get to modeling physical systems, we talk about simple mechanical systems like levers and how to model such systems. In control theory, we look very closely at a simple device called the operational amplifier. This device provides us with a really nice way to explain the main and the most important concepts of control theory. When we get to computational systems, we think about how to put back the abstractions of computing, like hardware and software, back into the physical world. The course uses several innovations to make learning easier and more enjoyable. One of these innovations is the Acumen modeling language. It's freely available online so that you can download it and try it for yourself. It has a graphical user interface that lets you type in, edit, and run your models. When you run your models, you see the plots or make 3D animations. It only takes a couple of lines in Acumen to make a visualization of, say, a box. Then, with a few short commands, you can change the color and the size of this box. Although drawing static 3D diagrams is already a cool feature that is easy for anyone to use, things get much better when we combine 3D shapes with dynamics. To introduce dynamics, we just add a couple of more lines and introduce two new variables. The first variable is x and the second is x prime, which is the rate of the change for x. If we set x prime to be 1, then x will be constantly growing. Then we can change the dimensions of one of the boxes from being, for example, 0.5 to 0.5 times x. Once we do that, when we run the simulation, the box is no longer static, but it grows in one dimension as x grows. With essentially these two features of 3D visualization and dynamics, Acumen lets you model and simulate a lot of very interesting uh, dynamical systems. We use Acumen throughout the course to give you a chance to design a ping-pong playing robot. At the start of the semester, you'll only have to do very simple things in this robot. As you learn more in the course, the models become more realistic and more challenging. Students work in teams of two, and there are virtual tournaments between virtual players every few weeks. Many students have produced excellent detailed designs by the end of the course. The last thing I would like to tell you about the CPS course is the flipped classroom. In the flipped classroom format, I focus on working with you on the homework during class. You watch the lectures at home. You even take an online quiz at home. 
During the class, we focus on making sure that you get all the help you can on solving problems. This is a new and proven method that many researchers believe improves learning, and it's a lot of fun. So in conclusion, I hope that this overview will encourage you to check out the online materials in Acumen. Thank you very much for watching this video.